I'd like to call the 10th regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Don't forget a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 15 present. And Alderman Jose is not excused. And next we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Next we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Donahue. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There's no resignations tonight or no new appointments, so we'll move on to confirmation of Mayor's appointments. City Attorney? I don't have that document. Uh, this is an appointment from the mayor submitting the following appointments for your confirmation to the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet. Uh, Penny Weber, president of Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride, for a term to expire April 30, 2017. Alderperson Donahue. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I move to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. All those who are, well, we'll take a roll call then for confirmation of the appointment. City Clerk. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, next item is moving on to our program, the City of Sheboygan's Urban Forest and Emerald Ash Borer Management Program. I'd like to call up David Beeble, Director of Public Works, and Joe Curlin, our Park Superintendent. Good evening. Um, real quickly, we're just going to give the council a quick update on the city of Sheboygan's forestry, urban forest. Basically, we're going to talk about the street trees, those trees between the sidewalk and the curb that we're all familiar with. And with me tonight is our superintendent of parks and forestry, Joe Curlin. He's pretty much going to run through the majority of, of the presentation. Um, I just want to inter, inter introduce you to the topic because Sheboygan's been Tree City USA for 39 years and next year will be our 40th. We're the longest running community in the state of Wisconsin. And you'll see with the presentation tonight the importance of an urban forest to a community and its quality of life. So with that, we're gonna get right into it. Joe? Still my notes here. Thank you. Thank you, David. So in July, um, the city went through Marina Parks and Forestry, went through the Public Works, and then it came back to the council. On July 5th, the council passed the city's first ever uh, urban forestry management plan. Tonight, we're going to basically update you on a portion of that plan, the EAB portion of that plan, Emerald Ash Borer, um, and then we're going to propose some budgets of, of what we're looking at to, to deal with the EAB. The urban forest of Sheboygan provides a multitude of aesthetic, economic, economical, and environmental benefits to the citizens, businesses, and visitors alike. The city of Sheboygan has a total of 22,154 street trees. Like David said, anything between the road and the sidewalks. Um, there are 5,139 uh, ash trees 
amongst those. So 23%, a high percent of, of trees. The only thing higher than ash trees is, is maple at about 35%. Although we have that uh, 22,000 street trees, the city has approximately uh, 3,700 available planting sites at this time too. So we, we have a deficiency of planting sites and I'll, we'll kind of show you why in, in just a little bit. Um, the forestry division is averaging about 500 to 600 tree removals a year uh, since 2013. Um, and that's not including anything to do with emerald ash borer at this time. So that will only increase our burden. Uh, the city needs to begin an aggressive planning pro program to restore our ur urban forest and our street tree canopy. First of all, a, a goal that's part of our plan um, eliminate high-risk situations. So first and foremost, it's always about safety to our citizens, to our residents, to our visitors. So removing high-risk trees is uh, the, the top thing that we need to keep doing. Uh, prune high-risk branches, uh, deadwood in the tree, uh, hangers, things like that. So anything that's a hazard, again, those are our, our first priorities. Get out, remove those. Um, determine if the tree is bad or just the branches. Uh, and then start working on removal of EAB ash trees because pretty soon they will just be dead trees. Our second, uh, secondary goal in our management plan, establish a routine comprehensive urban forest program promoting a healthy forest. That would be, the, the second goal is, is something we do not have at this time. We have a management plan, now we need to start using it. At this time, it's more of a, um, reaction, uh, not being proactive. So we need to be proactive in this management plan, and that's uh, the second goal. Perform yearly tree inspections. Really, every tree, 23,000 trees, should be looked at twice by someone in my department. Evaluate a risk management program. Perform training prunes. Something once we start planting trees, after three years of planting a new tree, you should get out there and you should do a training pruning. If you can touch a tree three to five times in the first 10 years that it's been planted, then you really don't have to do anything with that tree in the future to any great degree. Um, routine, uh, perform routine pruning and removals of non-ash tree, plant high quality trees with low maintenance. Here we go, urban, uh, the EAB. Uh, that little bug can fit on a head of a penny so it's that small, and that's the adult. <coughs> what you see below it is what's killing the tree. And that's, they're doing that in its larva state. So they exit the tree as an adult, but uh, they're eating, and it's disrupting the uptake of water and nutrients to the tree. And that's what's killing our trees. At this time, um, we are probably within about year four or five, we suspect, of having the emerald ash borer. And I've kind of preached this, first eight years is kind of slow moving, but from year eight to 12, they're all going and they're going fast. This is a, a picture of, uh, from June 16th, uh, I mean June 2006, so three years, and that's what I'm talking about. That fast, uh, those trees just went. So that's probably in that last four year stage. And this, uh, if you don't have a plan, you don't start uh, replacing, this is what your, your streets are going to look like. Benefits of trees. Sheboygan's public street trees provide annually uh, stormwater runoff reduction, uh, which helps us with, our, uh, with the DNR, $931,298 a year annually. Carbon dioxide reduction, $115,812. Energy savings by cooling, $840,000. Property values increase in the city, $1.1 million. Air quality improvements, $143,585. All these benefits have been, um, the to total is $3.1 million. <coughs> uh, this is used from a software called iTree Analysis, and it's what the USDA uh, forestry program uses. Um, so there's a definite worth to the trees we have. Ash trees, 
if we were to remove all of them right now, we'd be losing $631,000 worth of benefits. <coughs> so in the management plan, um, when we ran that through the committees, you know, and it was accepted, it was still, we, we still had to figure out what, what scenario, what, how are we going to handle this? So we had three scenarios we came up with. Scenario number one, remove everything, all mat, ash trees right away, as fast as we can, okay? Um, because if you don't, they're, they're going to die no matter what. Um, the pros, costs are definite and finite. You know what it's going to be. You can put a time period on it, and you can get it done. It's going to be expensive, but you can get it done. No long-term chemical treatment costs. We're not saving any. We're just going to get rid of them. Um, and we're losing, um, and after that, after you do that, you can plant a diverse uh, um, amount of trees. So you can diversify, you can put a, a plant other trees, you have that opportunity. Um, cons, high initial cost, probably about $3.6 million if we were just to get it done. Uh, unique species is lost in your forest, we're losing the ash tree, which is a hardy roadside tree, that's why everybody planted them, all cities did. And, uh, you know, public wouldn't be too happy losing all those trees along the roadside. Scenario two, um, save all the ash trees through the use of chemical treatment. You know, probably something we're not going to do. Um, but it would be about a $200,000 a year. And what would happen is you'd have to keep spending that money until you start letting those trees die. So... What we'd like to do, scenario three, and that's a combination of both of them. Approximately save half of them, approximately remove half of them. So what we would do right away, any tree 12 <coughs> inches um, at diameter, at breast height, so about this high on a tree, would go. Would be pegged to leave right away. Why? Smaller trees provide less benefit. Larger trees take up more groundwater, provide bigger benefit. After that, We'd have, to, we'd have to grade all the ash trees. And we'd have to decide which ones are staying, which ones are leaving, what year they would leave over the course of the next three years. Ash, pros for this, ash trees would remain a component of the forest. It would reduce the high initial removal amount. Only trees in good condition would be retained. So you'd be getting rid of all the bad ash trees out there. You'd be just keeping the good ones. Cons, long-term treatment costs may incur. Okay, now we're going to have to pay extra for treating. And public disapproval still of, of what tree stays, what tree goes. We're going to get back to the, the budget costs on the scenario three. But annual, um, annual forestry program activities. The first row here is there's full, we have four full-time employees basically just working on city trees, parks and, and street trees. So this is ongoing. We remove, again, about 500 plus trees a year. We had not been planting since 2005, uh, 2005, 2010, I'm sorry, 2010. We probably trim up, we call it elevating, because we're really not doing any training or pruning or elevating, um, about 1,200 trees a year. And then we are filling in the stumps of the trees removing the stumps of the trees and filling them in that we remove. That keeps our crew busy pretty much year-round. Within that, um, high priority is, again, our safety. If there's a safety factor, we, we, we'd go to that first. We're going to uh, where construction sites, road construction is going to be for the next year, and um, we're, we're trying to elevate trees so we meet our own ordinance for road and sidewalk heights. Uh, a big one, too, in the past years have been storm damage. The second row is EAB program, so this would be anything needed additional. Again, we're not going to increase um, employees. We have four. They're pretty much set. And it can vary a little bit, but anything we do above and beyond now, and if we don't hire more employees, which is what we're looking at is contracted services, this is what needs to be done. Tree removals. And we're going to try to do this over the next three years. Uh, tree removal, 750 a year. Tree treatments, 930 a year. Tree plantings, 500. I'm going to stop right there. We're not even making up for what we're removing. Okay, not even half. 
because we're removing half, 5,500 on our own, we're removing 750 per Emerald Ash Borer. Our 3,700 deficit is getting bigger, okay? Tree planting, we're just gonna continue planting 500 trees continuously. We're gonna, we're gonna eventually make it up, but that's the plan. Stump removals, again, every tree remove, remove the stump. Annual forestry program goals, so we put everything together with staff and contracted services. Tree removals, 1,250 trees a year over the next three years. Tree treatments, I mean a year. Tree treatments, 930 per year. Stump removals, 1,250. Tree planting, 500. Tree pruning. We get back to a management plan <coughs> and actually being proactive. In a city this size, we should be touching every tree once every eight years. Elevating, pruning, whatnot, every eight years, we're not even getting close to that. Forestry, up, um, forestry program costs, we're going back to scenario three now, okay? Ash tree removal, this is for three years, this top, this top uh, column. Ash tree removal total costs. So we're talking 2,250 tr trees of removal, 924,000. Tree planting total costs. We're going to be planting only 1,500 trees, 450,000. Basically, we're averaging $300 a tree to plant. Treating tree, trees, total cost. So we're treating 2,790 trees, 297,700. So a three-year total, $1,671,700. Okay, blow is just break that down uh, annually. Even with that, we're not done. With scenario three, which we believe is the best scenario because we're retaining some kind of tree canopy along our streets, we still have to deal then with the remaining half of ash trees eventually. We can take our time with that. We need to keep treating. Once you start treating a, an ash tree with the chemical that we're using, you treat it every three years until you decide we're just gonna let it go. Emerald ash borer is not going away. We stop treating that ash tree is going to get it eventually. So there's still a maintenance plan after that. We still need to, one, keep planting trees, and two, keep treating trees. It's, it's, it's an expensive program. We realize that. Um, but again, it's, it's a very important part of our community. And I guess this, this last slide is really going to summarize it in terms of we, you look at some of those figures and it talks about the value trees add to a community and oh, how, can they, how can they add 3.1 million? How can they add property value? Well, I just take a look at this slide of a neighborhood and I ask all of you, which, which neighborhood would you like to live in? The one with the trees or this neighborhood? and talk about the property values after all those trees are gone. And it's, it's going to be, it's, it's not going to, the, the difficulty with this is it's not going to be drastic and overnight, such as, let's say, it's a, a, a tornado comes through and wipes out all the trees in Sheboygan. You'll see it right away. This is going to be a slow, painful process. But we're trying with this plan to get ahead of it and maintain the forest and hopefully reestablish a more diverse forest moving forward for future generations. So again, it's part of the, part of the overall quality of life of our community. Um, just wanted to bring it to your attention and, and talk about the importance of this moving forward. What, one last comment. This is really for information, but it's also for hopefully for you to act on starting next year. So budget talking. I know we're doing the budget now, but we're really asking that the budget reflects for 2017 to start this program. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Next, we'll move on to public forum. City Clerk. Um, this evening, we have one person, Mike Burnett.
Mike, can I have your home address again? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay, and you will have five minutes. All right. I'll start out with a quickie. It would be a lot easier for you guys to spend the 20, 25 bucks and get a Chromecast, plug into the back of the TV and anybody's phone, computer, laptop, or whatever, shoot right up there at the press of a button. Help me out, too, but wouldn't have to do what you just did. Um, continuing on that front, it was mentioned to me that I am a nuisance for shooting as I am, and my reply is I would not have to shoot anything, period, if things were put online in a timely manner in an open format where it was usable. It, not at somebody's leisure. People are getting paid good money to do this. I mean, I worked as a journalist forever. I didn't get paid to go take the pictures. I got paid to get that stuff online within minutes. By the time a Packer game was over, we were at Green Bay, we're the national feed for the whole crap. And it's like we had a report up there of 100 pictures there within five minutes of that game being over. And that's not an exaggeration. That's what pros do. That's why you get paid. Um, and it's one of those, that my other bug would it be open format. You're spending a fortune doing it where you're doing it later. Why can't it just be streamed automatically to YouTube? I could do it from my phone right now, and it would be in totally HD quality. It would be perfect. It would be better than what, you're, what we're seeing, and we don't see that until a week or so later unless somebody asks them to do it that they like, and it's up there right away. But moving on to a different area, and it's like the wheel tax, whatever you want to call it, garbage, garbage fee, is always coming <coughs> and going, and um, somebody mentioned to me that the council doesn't have to deal with it now because they took care of it in committee. As far as I know, taking care of a committee didn't take care of anything. It still has to come in front of the council for a vote, and it's coming, and one way or another, and it's like there's a uh, column in the press by Jason is going away thing, and it's basically, you know, they need to take, take care of this kind of thing, and it's like, really? The, the citizens need to speak up more and give better input to the councilman. The councilman can only ask, act on what people tell them or ask them in the information. Right now, 99% of the information comes from, from department heads and from within City Hall. You get a little bit of information, you get your packets. You can't be expected to research every single issue and spend your whole life doing it. It's like, I think people do an okay job, some better than others, but that's life. That's how it always is. And I couldn't even tell you which ones are doing better than others. Um, and when you come to the point where they're saying, what, in Jason's where I really meant to go, it's like, oh, all you guys offer is, well, we should make some cuts and sell the taxing. And it's kind of like, you should. I mean, they invented the computer in the private sector Billions of people, that's way wrong, but millions of people got laid off in a lot of professions because the computer takes care of that. From secretaries to parsing data to gathering the information everything, the computers are awesome. But yet, in the public sector, it's very rare for anybody to get shed for something like that. And I understand how it goes, but sometimes people need to buck up and move in those directions. And when you're doing it, pure data other than things. You're looking at a couple of studies again tonight, and quite frankly, I think they're, for the most part, ridiculous. You do them again and again, but it's like people are always going to drown in whatever. Bad thing. Nobody's pro-drowning, but as much as you spend, it's going to happen, and spending money on continued studies is not really going to help. And the more you put in to pretending you're giving them safety, the more liability you're assuming when they do drown. Because if you're telling them we made the pier safe and they drown, you're increasing your liability. As it is now, you don't really have any liability on the pier because it's not your pier. Um, and when you do do your da data and your studies, pier straight data needs to be there, not conjecture, not numbers. Like I know the fire department's putting forth a bunch of data. I won't see the data, but it's like, I guarantee you they have numbers and studies and whatever it needs to be done. And it's like, I think things need to be done like that. And pretty much that's all, that's all I got. And I'll just, just in closing, I really hope the Bucks thing happens like everybody else does. And quite frankly, the best thing we got going for us is being close and having a couple of really great big men that can take care of the new kids when they come. <laughs> that's all I got, bye. Thank you, Mike. That's it for public forum. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. 
Well, as we near the uh, end of summer, it's beginning to slip away fast. Remember to attend some of our upcoming concerts. Uh, this coming Wednesday, the Quascom Band will be performing at Fountain Park at 6.30. This coming Thursday, the Levitt Amp uh, last concert will be taking place. At 6 o'clock, a band called Electric Color is on stage. And at 7 o'clock, uh, Fun Funkadesi is on stage. And then on the following week, on Wednesday, will be the last performance of the Sheboygan Pop series of playing at Fountain Park. And again, they'll start at 6.30. And I'd also like to ask you to save the date. The Mayor's International Committee is hosting a fundraiser. It'll be called Esslingen Fest. That'll be on September 18th from 11 to 4. And that'll be at the Three Sheeps Tap Room. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.13. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would uh, move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <laughs> Nice. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 3.1 is an RO by the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry, submitting as a matter of record the list of members of the newly formed Sheboygan Lakefront Waterfront uh, Task Group, along with the mission for the group. Um, Alderperson Lewandowski. I'd like to make a motion that this be approved. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Items 3.2 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Uh, on resolutions, item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Wolf authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish an appropriation for sidewalks and South Pier. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass resolution. First of all, on the motion to suspend, is there a second to that? Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Make a motion to pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on the motion on 4.1? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Item 4.2 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger authorizing enter into an agreement with Clunk Masonry for the installation of sidewalks on South Pier and between the former Sea Rice Building and the city-owned fish cleaning station. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to suspend, and the reason for suspension is that this is uh, an area on the South Pier where there currently is no sidewalk, and it's causing some ADA um, problems as well as uh, there is an existing contract with Clunk Masonry, and the financing for this stretch of sidewalk would be coming out of TID 6, I believe, and that expires at the end of the year, and they want to hurry up and get this done before that expires, hence the suspension. Second. Is there any uh, objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you. I move <clears throat> to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 4.4 is a resolution by Alderman Bellinger, Bitters, Bourne, Damro, Donahue, Drawn, Heidemann, Herman, Jose, Lassard, Lewandowski, Robbie, Schneider, Thiel, Trester, and Wolf commemorating the distinguished service of past Alderman John Gordon White to the city of Sheboygan. I'd like to ask the clerk to please read that resolution. I'm sorry, we'll go back to 4.3 in a second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right. The resolution commemorating the distinguished service of John Gordon White to the city of Sheboygan. Whereas John Gordon White served the citizens of the city of Sheboygan as alderperson from the fourth ward for two years from 1972 to 1974. And whereas during his tenure as alderperson, Mr. White served as a valuable member of numerous council committees, including public protection and safety, public works, health and welfare committee, judiciary and legislative committee, board of health and finance committee. And whereas John Gordon White passed away on Tuesday, July 26, 2016, and whereas Mr. White served his constituents in the city of Sheboygan faithfully and honorably, being a man of outstanding ability and integrity, and whereas Mr. White was a valuable member of the Sheboygan City Council, always legislating with an open mind and putting honesty and charity before all else, he will always be remembered as exemplifying the best qualities of leadership and public service to the city. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council hereby commemorates the distinguished service rendered by Mr. John Gordon White to the city of Sheboygan throughout his two years of service, expresses its sorrow in his passing and offers to his children John Michael and Karen and his entire family, its deepest sympathy. Thank you very much. And entertain a motion to approve. Second. I'll make that resolution. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go back to item 4.3, which is a resolution by Alderman Donahue authorizing the execution of an in ingress, egress easements with Bank Mutual, parcel number 59281-1072285, and Tom Kolbeck, parcel number 529, 59281-107. 270 the properties as it relates to parking lot 14 uh, Alderman Donahue uh, Thank you mayor as an initial uh, matter uh, suspension is requested uh, as I understand it the uh, parties to uh, an agreement um, uh, Regarding use of the uh, property need to have um, uh, Approval of this ingress and egress uh, agreement in order to have the um, the uh, agreement the overall agreement um, uh, be done in a, in a uh, timely manner. Accordingly, I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Uh, thank you, and then I would uh, move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Um, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Items uh, 4.5 through 4.8 will be referred to various committees. Uh, item under reports of officers. Item 5.1 is an RC by Public Protection and Safety. To whom is referred RO number 87 of 1617 by the City Clerk, submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Firefighters Local 483 regarding the 2016 Fill the Boot Drive to benefit MDA and recommends that the documents be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC by law and licensing reporting at its meeting on August 9th, the committee voted to conditionally recommend that the Common Council not renew beverage operator's license number 0664 held by Nathan Gottsacker. Alderman Lassard. 
Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Please proceed. Is Nathan um, Gutsucker here? He was invited to our committee on two occasions and did not show up at either one. So the committee um, decided uniformly that we were going to deny his license. Thank you very much for that explanation. Is there any other discussion on this? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on, items 5.3 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 69 of 1617 by the city clerk, submitting various license application and recommends denying beverage operator's license 0302 based on his ineligibility for an oper beverage operator's license. His record of violations related to the licensed activity is record as a repeat law offender and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Person Lassard. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is um, Jonathan Mines here? He's not here. We had come to find that he was ineligible to have a license and the total committee denied his license as well. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. 5.4 is an RC by law and licensing who is referred RO number 69 of 1617 by the city clerk. Various license applications. Recommends that the denying beverage operator's license 1099 based upon her failure to accurately review all relevant convictions on her application or record of violations related to the licensed activity and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Lassard. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Yes. I'm wondering if Irina Kosi is here. Not being here, she did not show up for her um, different appearances upon request, and the committee in its entirety denied this license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 69 of 1617 by the city clerk's office submitting various license application and recommends denying beverage operator license 5314 based upon her failure to accurate review all relevant convictions on her application or record of violations related to the licensed activity. Her record is a repeat law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Lassard. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is Victoria Beaumont here? Not being here, she did not appear at either of the two requests to our committee, and it was an entire committee denied um, her license. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.6 is an RC by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 75 of 1617 by the city clerk. Various license application and recommends denying beverage operators license application 9410 based upon her failure to accurately review her relevant convictions <laughs> on her application or record of violations to the related licensed activity and her record as a repeat law offender. Alderperson Lassard. Thank you. I received a phone call from Dave Rapinski. It appears that Cynthia Christman, 
who did make application to our committee and, and was denied with the police referral to not allow, is with him in Colorado and has asked if we would hold this so that she could make her appearance before the committee um, in two weeks. Okay, you have a motion to hold. Is there a second? Second. Okay, that we have a motion on the floor to hold. Is there any discussion? See, now will the clerk please call the roll. Okay, we can do all ayes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 5.7 is an RC by Public Protection and Safety, to whom is referred resolution number 72 of 1617 by Alderman Bellinger, directing the purchasing agent to prepare a request for proposal for an operational and departmental structure study of the Sheboygan Fire Department and recommends passing the resolution. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I put this together, um, and prior to doing so, uh, I met with the, uh, the head of the union, Chase Longmiller, as well as the fire chief, and got both of their supports. They were supportive <coughs> of this, gathering further information. Um, that the study that was done by the union was uh, rather narrow in its scope in base. This is a broader um, study. This does not bind the council um, to do anything. All this is, and it's not costing anything other than uh, Bernie's time to put it together and put it out for uh, an RFP. Uh, there is no uh, financial consequence at this point to the city. My intent is to find out uh, what the cost would be and what the time frame would be to turn around this information. And the goal would be to get a five to 10 year long range plan for the fire department that would include uh, where the station should be located, how they should be manned, uh, what apparatus should be where um, in, in the staffing structure. So um, it's, it's got support from, from all the different areas. Uh, what I want to do as well as have an independent um, third party look at this is because I want to take the, the politics from the union out of it, the politics from the management of the f fire department out of it, as well as the, the politics from the council here out of it, and get an objective body to look at this, provide us with some information, and see what comes back. And again, this is just an RFP. There's no cost associated with it, and I would just like to see what comes back. Um, from the RFP process, and then we can debate as a council um, the, the scope of work that would be included, the time frame that we could get a result back, and the costs associated with it, and determine if we want to move forward at that time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Lassard. Thank you. I'm not in favor of getting another study done. We have a study done by the police union, which is pretty in-depth. But we also have department heads, and I think that we should hold them accountable to be giving us some of the information that we're requiring for a plan for the next four to five years. Um, I, the way I see it is it's another year will be tied up, and we're trying to prepare for budgets, and as I'm just not comfortable with not moving forward. I'd rather spend any money that we're going to be spending on a police uh, fire department report on fixing the fire department. So I am not in favor of this, and I think that we, we order plenty of studies, that's for certainty. And I would like to see um, our, de our department heads, who we pay a salary for to give us these types of information, be accountable and make a request within a timely manner to get this information that we're asking for. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, based on and, and with the understanding, as Alderman Bellinger said, that this is just a request for proposals. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're not committing any city money at this time. However, it would be my hope that um, when those proposals come back and following what Alderperson Lassard was saying, it does appear to me that we can reasonably expect the fire chief to prepare answers to each of these particular bullet points based on his experience overall as a firefighter and in fire administration, and two, on his tenure here at Sheboygan, um, because I am sure that he has information and opinions and analysis on each and every one of these issues. Um, I think if we have the 
fire chief's response to each and every one of these bullet points and can evaluate that response along with what the proposals come back, I think we'll be able to make a better decision as to exactly what it is that we need. So while I'm not asking that the motion at this point be amended, um, it is going to be very difficult for me in the end to support any additional money for a study unless the chief's responses are provided at the same time. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen, oh, I'm sorry, thirteen eyes and three no's. Motion passes. <coughs> Next, we'll move on to 5.8, which is an RC by Public Works, to whom is referred resolution number 76 of 1617, direct referral by Alderman Bellinger, extending the special charge for residential garbage and refuse disposal services provided by the city and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? I would, uh, I would immediately like to amend the uh, resolution so it would be, instead of $5, $2.50, and that it would sunset in three years. Okay. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Thank you. Okay, we have an amendment on the floor. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing no discussion on the amendment, we'll take a vote on the amendment. This amendment would change the uh, parameters of the resolution then to $2.50 for three years. <clears throat> okay, we're voting on the amendment only. Okay, the clerk's calling the roll. Eleven ayes, five noes. Motion passes. The uh, motion then before us, as amended, is to extend the garbage fee for three years at two dollars and fifty cents. Is there any discussion on the main motion as amended? Administrator Hofflin. Uh, as you all know, this has been discussed uh, several times. I'm sure it was uh, discussed at length when it was originally approved in 2012 and then amended in 2013. Uh, as you know, uh, it must be reviewed uh, every two years as it currently stands. Um, the concern I have as the city administrator is, um, is the use, the previous use of the money and what your expectations are as far as what cuts or what programs won't be continued into the future. I know uh, in the last uh, couple months, uh, uh, you received a, a comprehensive presentation at the Committee of the Whole from your Director of Public Works, and I know that high on your priority are transportation-related uh, challenges in the community, uh, street improvement programs. Uh, in the past, this has been a major source, uh, at least for the non-borrowed portion of, of those programs, and to cut this to $2.50 uh, significantly impacts that program. So uh, unless you're going to be uh, unless you're going to be open to considering replacing this these funds uh, five dollars down to two fifty, uh, ultimately it may uh, result in, uh, in in additional borrowed funds if you want to sustain the program that as outlined by your director of public works. Um, that's that's my main concern. Uh, as you also know. Due to state law changes, if this is dropped from $5 to 250, 
uh, you cannot go back to $5 unless you have a corresponding cut in the property tax levy. So you are making a decision that is permanent in nature as far as the financial impact to the community. Thank you for those comments. Uh, are there further discussion, Alderman Bellinger? Thank you, Mayor. Um, the garbage fee represents $1.1 million. We cut it in half, that's gonna be 550,000. We're getting this fantastically generous contribution from the county of $411,000. We've got a difference of $139,000. So that's, that's what we have. We're not gonna have this tremendous hole or anything that we need to fix. It's a matter of $139,000. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you. I'm not in favor of this. I'm in favor of the original <coughs> proposal you made. Alderman Bellinger at $5 for three years. Or was it two years? I believe it was two three years. years. Um, I'm, I'm just not going to be supporting this. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Um, thank you. I, um, <clears throat> I know we've all thought about this, and I've spoken about it a number of times. Um, I just don't think that our budget should necessarily be punished based on what the county did. Now, we're all unified on this council opposing the county sales tax, at least in, the, in terms of the parsimonious kind of... Uh, uh, percentage that we're getting uh, from it. <coughs> the plain fact is that our roads are in bad shape. Director Beeble told us that, I think it was f three or four years ago, the number of roads in fair to poor condition was about 6.7%. It's now at 16.7%. We are going down a road that is full of potholes, but it is a road of delayed maintenance. It's like having a house and deciding, you know, the roof is leaking, but I'm just not gonna repair it this year. The windows are rattling, it's costing a lot of money to you know, pay the gas bill, but we're, not gonna, we're just gonna put it off. It's like, I know the paint is chipped and falling off, but who cares, you know, we'll get to it sooner or later. When you finally get to it, it is very expensive. Director Beeble's report also told us just how expensive delaying these kind of projects is. So if we think that we are saving our citizens $2.50 a month, we are not, unless they move away, because sooner or later we're gonna to have to pay more money to repair roads that are in much worse condition because somehow we felt that saving people $2.50 a month was that important. I understand that we're all upset about what the county did. I am as upset, well, I'm not sure I'm as, quite as upset as, attorney, as uh, Alderman Bellinger, but I'm still really disturbed by what the county did. They did it, it's here, but we should not punish our own taxpayers. We shouldn't say, you know, we saved you $2.50 a month on, on that garbage fee. Now I know that, you know, your tires are out of alignment because of the fact that you hit a few bumps in the road and so forth, and that's gonna cost you $700, but remember, I saved you $2.50 a month. So I'm just going to say, I think that this is bad public policy, and I would just urge us not to, once it's gone, it's gone forever, and I would urge us just to keep this in place. It, it has become something that our taxpayers are used to paying, Frankly, I got very few complaints when it was first uh, um, initiated, but I've gotten zero complaints since then. And I'm not saying that $2.50 a month for some of our residents is not a substantial amount of money, but traveling on these roads, the economic impact to our community, because who wants to come to Sheboygan where you have to be really careful you know, when you drive down 6th Street, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna vote against this, I want us to keep I want us to keep the $5 garbage fee. I don't think we should futz and dutz with it anything anymore. I don't want this sunset thing, but I'm willing to live with that as long as we keep the $5 in place. It's $550,000. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm obviously in favor of the keeping it the $5 as the way I voted. Um, I look at it as we can't just make it about roads. We've got to look at the big picture of everything we need in the city. Obviously, Alderman, Alderperson Don Hughes making it about roads. 
I'm looking at services, I'm looking at fire, I'm looking at police. I think about this past weekend, I think about what happened to the South. Are we equipped to do something like what's going on down there? What happens that happens in our neighborhood? Do we have the police enough to do that? Do we have enough fire department to help those police? Um, and I really think of those type of things when I see a scenario like that. What would happen in our community? We're so worried about cutting services. We need them to cut more. We need public works to cut more. We need all this. I think they've cut pretty much. They've done a great job of cutting. It's time to make sure we have enough for this community. Um, and I think we need to look at that big picture. Um, granted, it was only 697 people who did take the survey, and I thank those people out there who did take the survey. And if you looked at question 17 about the cost of providing city services, the highest percentage one was using a combination. The lowest one was cutting services. And I'm not about cutting any services. Um, that's why I want to keep this at the $5. I'm not in favor of the 250. Anybody who voted to go against the $5 down to 250, I'd like you guys to speak and tell the citizens where you want the cuts to happen. If you have an idea, you don't want to vote for it, speak out, let the public know. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I kind of have a two-part question, and I think I'll let either the city attorney or the city administrator answer it. The first is, um, why did we pass the wheel tax? Did we need money? Is that why we passed the wheel tax? Did we need money for the streets? Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Second part is, what, by what legal mechanism were we able to pass the wheel tax? That's a legal question, so I'll answer it. There is a state statute that provides the ability to pass a wheel tax. So there is an ability to raise money. If we lower this, you say we can never get this $2.50 back. There are other legal mechanisms where we can raise, raise fees to get money back or more money. Isn't that true? No, that is not correct. So they how, did, still how, did, how were we able law. to do the wheel tax? Because the wheel tax is provided for specifically in state law. Specifically in state law, it also provides that the city cannot provide other fees unless, they course, unless there is a corresponding cut in uh, the tax levy. So it's all based on state law. So well, when the wheel tax... Are you suggesting that we take other action in the future to increase the wheel tax? Is that what you're, you're trying to get across? What I'm suggesting is that I think that the Common Council is trying to be scared into not supporting this reduction to 250 because there can never be, they can never get this money any other way. And I just don't believe it. We can raise the wheel tax down, down the road somewhere if it's absolutely necessary. Well, I know we can by referendum. We can go to the citizens and we can raise money that way. By referendum, we can get around Act 10. So there are our legal mechanisms by which, <clears throat> if absolutely necessary, this money can be gotten back again. But I believe that this is a scare tactic to scare members that are supporting the reduction of 250. They're trying to scare them into not supporting the re uh, resolution as amended. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lassard. Thank you. <coughs> I just have a question. If, in fact, um, we reduced this to 250, I totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> it can never go back to five. Why? Oh, I hear, here it comes. <laughs> can we approve? Can we? We approve something redone or at five, and then if we find out next year that God has blessed us with this enormous amount of funds, can we sunset it early? Does it have to be a mandatory two years? Can we have it five dollars for one more year or two more years and then go back a year? If we in a year's time, boy, this is around the block. If in fact next year at this time we find that God has blessed us with these funds and we don't need this <coughs> any longer, can we sunset it early or does it have to be mandatory the period of time that it stays? City attorney? You can. So if, if for example, if this were to get voted down and, it, and there would be a vote in favor of a $5 uh, fee, garbage fee, 
for two years, and then a year from now you decide to cut it, you could cut it. You couldn't bring it back up after that, but you could cut it in a year. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Alderman Wolf, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, kind of bring up a few things. Um, uh, some of the concerns that I guess I want to point out are over the course of time from budgeting and common council meetings and presentations, we talk about our great city, we talk about how our roads, our trees, our infrastructure, our capital improvements, our, all of these multiple things that we don't have enough money, we don't have enough money coming in, we've been cutting things, we've done a great job reducing budget, reducing um, our services to the best of our ability over the, the past, what, 12 plus years. We look at our, at our roads as an example, and I'm just using that as an example uh, as because we have 200 miles and we all travel them every day, whether it's a fire truck, an ambulance, a police car, or our, our constituents driving to work, to play um, throughout our city. We all have issues with them. I have not had that many people. I've had one person call me and complain about the actual um, garbage fee. The person that called me complained about the garbage fee because we call it a garbage fee, not that they were paying the $5, but that we call it a garbage fee. When we talked about it, they actually said, I don't have a problem paying it. We keep talking about our budgets. We keep talking about how, where are we going to come up with the extra money? We want more police. We want more fire firemen. We want you know, new police cars, our capital improvements budgets are ridiculously been held at three million for forever. Cost of, in, you know, the cost of uh, living, cost of doing things has gone up over the years, but yet we keep talking about reducing and reducing and reducing. I understand the county tax, we're gonna get a, a magnificent $411,000, thank you so much. We should be looking at that as a bonus versus something to compensate and reduce things. Our constituents, myself included, we don't like paying the extra fees, but we're, our hands are tied. It's not a scare tactic. Let's keep it the way it is, $5 for now. If we have to, let's keep it for two years in, or three years. Let's try to get ahead, let's try to get caught up and fix some of the things that our constituents are, we're all tired of having. That's what I have to say. Thank you for those comments. Anyone else? Alderman Thiel. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not using it as a scare tactic either when I talk about what I'm saying. Um, I truly believe we're about two years away from maybe even just getting rid of it all. Um, but I think we need to keep it at the $5 for a couple years. We have some really good things going on in the city, some great development, some great things going on that's gonna add um, to our general fund down the road. Um, I just really think we need to keep it at $5 for $2 to get the services we need. Um, I also have not received one single phone call <clears throat> about the garbage fee at all. Um, I talk to a lot of people at work. There's a lot of people that I work with. When we're in the break room, that's what we're talking about because they know what I do. And they're all in favor of it. They've talked about it with me already. Um, I don't think it's as big as a deal as, as <coughs> we're making it, to be honest with you. They'd rather have services than to cut $2.50. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion or amendments? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you may notice on the screen up there, Jim Bourne voted aye. Uh, I can't remember for sure four years ago if I voted for the original garbage fee. I may have with the idea that it was supposed to go away as I spoke, <coughs> spoke about before, uh, but I'm not gonna go through all of that tonight. I think this is a reasonable compromise. Uh, it gives some relief to our, to our taxpayers and it also, uh, makes us take a hard look at our budget as we go into 2017. So I think this is a reasonable compromise. I have had a couple of emails over, over the weekend regarding this, and uh, I basically said I wanted to see how the discussion went tonight, and uh, I decided by thinking about this over the weekend, I think this is a reasonable compromise, and that's why I, I'm supporting the 250 in three years. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Lewandowski. 
Yes, two weeks ago I voted to get rid of the garbage fee altogether. And I had people that have thanked me for that, saying thanks for looking out for the taxpayers. But I would be willing to go along with the 250 as a compromise <coughs> for now with the provision that it does, we do get rid of it in a few years. So I will be voting in favor of the $2.50 fee for now. Thank you very much, Alderman Lewandowski. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I guess I would like to make a comment again. Um, we talk about how this is so important and how we're going to relieve our, ta our constituents going from $5 to $2.50, which I'm against. But I, I would like to ask our council to, to kind of internalize and think about this. We are 40,000 plus constituents here. How many people are calling you? Is it 50%? Are we all getting, you know, 20 some thousand phone calls, emails? If we're getting two or 20, I mean, are we talking, I'm personally thinking that all of us together were less than a percent of people that are actually concerned about it. We need the money, we need to keep it the way it is, and I would like to make a motion to keep it at the, the original 5%. I would, I would make the motion that it would be a two-year sunset. Thank you. Okay, so the motion is, is $5, or not 5%, correct? $5, dollars $5 for two years rather than three years, is that correct? Yes. Okay, is there a second to that amendment? I'll second that, but can he do that because yeah. he voted nay on the on the last? We went through this last meeting. City, well, me. this is an amendment, so it's not it, it's not something that's already been passed and now is a change. This is an amendment to the motion on the floor. The chair can determine, or the you know the mayor can determine whether it's a germane motion. But it's a it's a motion. It's an amendment to the motion on the floor, and that's permissible. Okay, I'm, I accept it as a motion. So uh, this is a motion to, um, to go to, to $5 for two years, and we have a second. So any discussion on this amendment? Alderman Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know what? I had several people come up to me at Brat Days, and they thanked me for the way I voted at the last Common Council meeting. When I when I voted in favor of reducing it to 250, and and having it sunset in three years, so maybe some of you haven't had a lot of people um, complaining about the fee, but I had several people come up to me at Brat Days and thank me for trying to lower it. Thank you for sharing that, Alderman Donahue. Um, I'm just procedurally just wanting to make sure that we're all on the same page. <clears throat> so the amendment to um, to change the garbage fee from five to 250 passed. And now we have an amendment to change the 250 to five. Right, with a, with a two year sunset. All right, and so if we vote in favor of this motion to amend, we will be in favor of the $5 garbage fee with a two year sunset. Right. Can I just get a clarification on who did the second, Alderman Wolf and Alderman Lassard? Thank you. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, did we vote on uh, the amendment for the, to bring it to 250? Pardon me? Wouldn't we, be, wouldn't we have to vote on the amendment to, to make it 250 from the five first before we go back to the five? We did. We did. No, there's a, a second amendment that's come in amending the main motion. So we have to deal with this amendment before we can vote on the, over the, uh, the main motion as amended originally. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, then we're voting on the amendment to go to $5 for two years. So an I vote is in favor of $5. Correct. For two Thank years. you. For two years. For two years. Yeah. Clerk, please call the roll. Okay, I just want to get the right one here. Okay. Eight eyes, eight nose.
Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay, next item uh, is 5.9 on the agenda. That'll be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Don't we have to vote oh, I'm on sorry, we have to vote on the amended motion. Right. Any discussion on the motion as amended? Hold on. Oh my God. Uh, Alderman Jose. Yeah, I'll be, because now it's gonna be $5 and extended for two years, I'm gonna vote no. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none. Oh, Alderman Heideman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, again, n a number of aldermen were not present when we initially brought the fee in. And at that time, uh, Don Hammond gave us an example of how we can get past a hole in the budget by having a $7 fee. Then we turned it down, then we brought it down to $5. Again, what we're doing here now is, oh, we'll never go to five, but two years. Okay, say the council changes, and they're just going to continue to extend us forever. Um, I was promised, or I promised my constituents that the fee would go away. I was voting in favor of it, knowing that it was going to sunset and go away. Now, this is typical government, where you go, well, we got a fee, we might as well keep it around. And not only do, and I was ready to uh, compromise and go for the 250 instead of give, getting rid of it altogether. But again, now, we, now we're voting on extending it for two years, and then it's never going to sunset. It'll be two more years after that, and two more years after that. So I just want to make sure that my constituents understand that I went along with the initial thought that, uh, and the promise that I had that I wasn't going to keep this fee around forever. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this turn of events is, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, it really kind of makes me sad. But anyway, uh, we've got, we just passed a wheel tax. We've got, you know, taken advantage of by the county on the sales tax. We've got this, and I think it's a good compromise to go down to 250 in three years and see where we're at financially with all the new, net new construction that would be coming on board in the coming years. Uh, we've got a school board that wants to get in our pockets for $29 million with a referendum coming up this fall. And we've got the Capital Commission that originally had a $7.3 million borrowing that they wanted to do. That got knocked down to $6.3 million, and that's coming before the Plan Commission. When does it end? It's got to stop. You know, we've got enough going on right now. We can go, I think it's a fair compromise to take it down to 250 and have it for three years. You know, just going back and back and forth and gouging the taxpayer, you know, because we've got this crisis of roads. We've, we, it's not going to matter, you know, if we have $25 for a garbage fee. We can't keep, catch up with our roads in a short period of time. It's going to take a concerted effort and some strategy and some, you know, some other creative things with this council to achieve the goal that we need to do it. But keep going into the taxpayer for this. You know, it just really disturbs me, and I'm disappointed in the whole thing. Thank you for your comments. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to kind of touch base on a couple of things. Um, granted, I wasn't here when it was originally put into play, and unfortunately, I don't know the exact financials back then. But when we look at how things are going as in present state, we need, we're not digging into the constituents' pockets. We're talking about $30 a year for our constituents to help the city continue to fix and repair and, and keep the services that we have. We, I'm not going to talk about the roads. Let's talk about all of the other things, like Alderman Bellinger talked about the, the request for $7.3 million. We, we had $126 million on the table for five years of cost. How are we ever going to do that at $3 million a year? The city has done a great job trying to reduce cost, reducing budgets, keeping things in check, but we also, like, like Alderman Donahue had said, we haven't been fixing the, the infrastructure and the, 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 the ownership of the city. The things that we own as constituents, as taxpayers, we haven't been taking care of the house. So I understand and I, I appreciate um, the, the issue where we would love to get rid of it and take it away, 
But what I'm asking is that let's keep it for $5 and let's keep it for the two years that's on the table right now and let's get our house in order. Let's take care of the fire, police, the infrastructure that we have, the, the roads that we have issues with, our trees that we just saw that are deteriorating. Let's maintain and fix the city the way the, our constituents want it and need it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. Just very briefly, um, just so that um, people who are listening to uh, our meeting or will read about it or listen in the paper or listen to it on the radio tomorrow, I just do want to point out, um, and Director Beeble again was very good at pointing out to us that the uh, city, the actual levy, the dollar levy, uh, from 2005 to, through 2016 has actually decreased in terms of real dollars. In terms of inflationary dollars, we have reduced the budget, and I, I know that our Sheboygan Press reporter calculated that. I remembered it about 26%. So we have been extremely good stewards of the public dollar, and the fact that we have managed to keep our budget in actual dollars flat and in real you know, inflationary dollars, we've actually had a substantial drop. I think really indicates that we have not been gouging the taxpayers. <laughs> we are running a really nice city, and it costs some money to do that. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Jose. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, am I correct in assuming that if, if we just vote the resolution down like we did two weeks ago, the effect would be that it would just sunset at the end of the year, the garbage tax, right? Unless somebody brings it up again. Again in the future, right? Right. Okay, seeing no other discussion, uh, clerk will call the roll on the motion as amended to keep the garbage fee at $5 for the next two years. Nine eyes, seven no's. Motion passes. God. And then we'll go on to 5.9, which will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Matters laid over. 6.1 is resolution number 66 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue adopting an additional <coughs> benefit as part of the city's medical benefit and dental plan effective for calendar year, year 2016 coverage. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. I would move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is resolution number 67 of 1617 by Alderman Donahue adopting certain changes to the city's medical benefit plan effective for calendar year 2017 coverage and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January of 2017 coverage and thereafter. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. I would move to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is resolution number 68 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf, Boren, Bellinger, Donahue, and Schneider, authorizing the city of Sheboygan to purchase software and hardware equipment for the Information Technology Department. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, make a motion to put, uh, put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> C 
16 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is resolution number 69 of 1617 by Alderman Wolf, Boren, Bellinger, Donahue, and Schneider, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget to establish appropriation for information to uh, technology equipment. Alderman Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, that the resolution be put, on, put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to other matters, City Attorney. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. That'll go to the Law and Licensing Committee. Uh, next is a contemplated closed session. Over person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided under Section 1985, Sub 1, Sub E with stats for the purpose of discussion and formulation of negotiating strategies relative to the natural resource damage assessment process where bargaining reasons <coughs> require a closed session. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Fifteen eyes, one no. Motion passes. I'd like to let our viewers tonight know that uh, we'll be adjourning in closed session. Uh, we'll take a three-minute adjournment till 25 after the hour.